Dr. Philippa is here with an important health message, and uh, it's uh, it's one that, uh, well, we never thought we'd cover, but we cover everything here. In fact, you're not supposed to cover it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> what to keep out of your vagina and off your vulva. So let's find out. I mean, intrigued. We don't talk about these things enough, and we should do, because it's just part of your body, like any other part of your body, but right. people do get a bit embarrassed when it comes to talking about these things. Right, so to me, as a doctor, saying the words vulva and vagina are the same as saying elbow or nose, and actually, most people don't even know what we mean when we refer to them. So when we say vulva, we are talking about the outer lips and the yep. whole external area of the female genitals, and the vagina is the tube that then goes inside that meets your cervix to enter your womb, just like the graphic showed. OK, so... Right. So, there is, a, there is a mask out now, and though I've got it in, but I've just taken it out of the packet. Australian beauty brand Fig Femme have recently re re released their new uh, controversial vulva mask. Um, it's sparked outrage amongst doctors. £14 claims to hydrate, soothe and protect the skin, whilst also smoothing out wrinkles um, on the... Vulva, and it looks like a packet of pants. What, like, like it does. It's like lace, isn't slippery it? Slippery pants when you take it out. I'm just sort of trying to work I out how this goes. Is it like a pair of knickers you sort of get into? So you apply it like a sheet mask, um, and this is one of the ones which are available. Um, and you apply it essentially to the external I can't work that out. genitalia. No. Now, this what? might help. Well, so I've got this down. Yeah, yeah. but I you literally still apply can't it to it the out. front, like, oh, okay. like half a pair of knickers. OK. But the, we don't need to. We don't need to because the, the problem that I have with this is it irons out wrinkles. Yeah. I mean... So I think that a lot of the beauty industry and the women's health pseudoscience industry feeds into the whole old-fashioned idea that periods are dirty, that women's health is something that is shameful and mm. that we should be ashamed of. And this sort of, to me, really feeds into yeah. that. Mm. Um, they've used a little bit of science to sort of try and trick us, essentially, into saying that we need this. So it says that it's got... Um, the Fig Fem one says that it's got lactobacillus in it, a non-living probiotic. Now, a non-living probiotic means it's dead. Um, and the vagina has a really complex microbiome, the bacteria in there. And if you disrupt that, then you are going to risk irritation, bacterial vaginosis and thrush. You don't need that. Um, like the body's really clever, isn't it? It's got it's this amazingly down. You clever. don't really need Your any Your vagina is help. a self-cleaning tube. You don't need it. And quite frankly, if somebody is commenting on the appearance of your vulva, you need someone else to have a look yeah. instead. Yeah, fair enough. Quite right. There's um, there's many other products out there on the market. It's not just this one. And we were going to go through some of them now, things that you really recommend that you don't use and actually should be avoided. So let's go through some of these. So the first one you might have heard of recently is a brush to help remove your menstrual blood and other debris. Now they are about the size of a toothbrush um, and they look like a little silicone comb. And this is meant to go inside the and vagina and clean around. And you're meant to put that inside you during your period to help sweep everything out. You don't need to do this. Your body will naturally do this on its own mm. and the vagina is supposed to have a discharge, it's supposed to be moist and it cleans itself. Mm. When you put something inside there, you are going to disrupt the natural balance of what is in. And again, saying you need to do something to clean it suggests that it's because it is dirty. Absolutely. Which again is and not a great not. message. It is not. What about laser therapy? So laser therapy is slightly controversial because um, it, there are some um, conditions, for example, after the menopause where there may be some evidence that it might be useful for boosting collagen production. But actually what it's touted as often is part of vaginal rejuvenation, that you need a young vagina. Mm. Um, and what they're really saying is young equals tight. Now, we should be doing our pelvic floor exercises as women, whether or not you've had a baby, whether or not you've had a cesarean section, everybody should be doing those things. And we don't need lasers or other invasive treatments um, instead. And the other really popular one, which Gwyneth Paltrow is a big fan of and her website, Goop, is vaginal steaming. Um, and essentially, you sit over a pot of boiling water and herbs, and the claims include that you could clean out your whole womb. Again, you don't need to do that. You're at risk of burning extraordinarily sensitive Is that skin. biologically possible? To clean, to out, clean your... out your womb by sitting on a bit of steam? Using a bit of steam, It's no. not going to happen, no. is it? No, no. 
wouldn't. And you wouldn't want it to happen. You absolutely wouldn't want it to happen. We want the balance of those bacteria to remain as they are. We know that actually changing all of that can be linked to even conditions like ovarian cancer. Leave it be. So, so what it says on that screen there, what shouldn't you do to your vagina, the answer is pretty much everything. Anything that you can buy could be unsafe, it's a gimmick, it won't do you any good, it could do you harm. It could do you harm, and that also includes the home remedies that lots of people might have heard of. Things like putting yoghurt on a tampon for thrush, or garlic, because garlic um, has some antibacterial properties. Mm -hmm. If you put food inside your vagina, it is going to macerate and rot, and going to be really um, increase your risk of infection. OK, I mean, that doesn't sound good. Um, what about um, you, after the menopause, or anybody who's experiencing something like vaginal dryness, that they may feel that they need some sort of moisturiser or oestrogen or something like that, because that's kind of... You would go to your doctor and speak yeah. to them about something. So vaginal dryness and irritation is extremely common. Um, it's especially common after the menopause. It also often happens after you've had a baby, and that's to do with the drop of oestrogen. Um, and, yes, we can help as doctors. First of all, I would say don't wash with anything that is irritating and you can buy particular vaginal moisturisers and your pharmacy or doctor will be able to advise you which ones don't contain irritants. Um, but actually in that postnatal period and after the menopause, often we need a little bit of topical oestrogen, um, which we can deliver in a cream or a gel in order to create the, the environment that, that we want and prevent that dryness and make sex less painful. Do you think women are embarrassed about their vaginas because they don't really know or their vulvas because they don't really know what one looks like because they never look they don't see anybody else's so they're not used to it so yeah. they sort of go well it's got to be perfect and somebody's telling me it has to look like this and so actually we might not be in the in the swimming pool changing rooms like we used to be but actually if you're growing up as a little boy and you go to the changing rooms you see lots of them because male exter male genitalia are external yeah. female genitalia are hidden and so most women do not know what it looks like we then add in influences like pornography where everybody has all their hair removed, that hair serves a purpose biologically. Um, and it's not a wonder, actually, that those messages really get yeah. confused. And we need to be saying that this is part of our body, same as our elbows. We need to look after it in order to keep it healthy, never mind before we get any enjoyment out of it. So what do you do? What, so, what, are, what are the things you should do? First of all, there are the don'ts. You do not need any kind of soap, any kind of feminine hygiene product that says we're going to um, change the pH of your vagina. It's supposed to be slightly acidic. Leave it be. No douching. Your vagina is a self-cleaning tube. You wash the outside with a little bit of water, cotton gusset for your knickers, and if you have irritation or if your discharge changes to something which is not normal for you, then please come and see your GP. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Very thorough, wasn't it, that? Well done. Good. <laughs>